Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, it's been a little minute since I've made a video, but I have some cool stuff to make a video about, so here I am. Um, one of the more exciting things that I get to do in my little hobby here is I get to test products for cool companies. One of the coolest companies, Turbo Dork, has sent me some new things to play with today and show you. So that's what we're going to do today. So what do we got going on here? We got some new paints here, two of which are brand new colors that are not out yet as of filming. Uh, there's some other colors here that have been around for a minute, but you're already going to notice some changes with the uh, older colors too. Um, so we've got some paints we're going to look at. Um, we got another cool little toy that they sent me. We got some uh, some other mixing sticks that we'll talk about here in a minute. And um, let's just go ahead and get started, right? So yeah. Um, if you follow Turbo Dork on their social media, you might be aware that some new stuff's coming out. Some new colors are coming out. Some new bottle designs have been released. Um, lots of really good stuff going on. And what's going on here is the following. Um, first off, you'll notice the bottles look different. Um, they have been selling their paint in the kind of standard uh, shape, size, 20 milliliter paint bottles that you get your other paints in, which is rad. Um, but now they're doing something a little different. It may look a lot larger, but it's not, it's a little bit larger. I think this is a 22 milliliter, um, if I recall correctly. Um, so you get a little, you get a little more paint. More paint's always better. <coughs> I would be down with like giant bottles because I use a ton, but bigger is always better for paint bottles for me. Um, anyway, I do like the kind of grippiness of the fatter bottle there. That's dope. Um, if these bottles look familiar to you, that's because they are technically a vape juice bottle. Um, there is a manufacturer making them the bottles for them that is a like a vape juice bottle company and it turns out that these designs are just really good paint bottles too um you know you've got your kind of standard kind of bottles and the issues that kind of come with them um sometimes i will struggle to like get a precise drop out of these old-fashioned bottles here um but he actually sent me i've had these for a minute and i didn't realize that's what he was up to is that these are the new bottles when he sent me the prototype stuff. Um, what I've liked about these bottles, and I told him, I was like, I like that you can kind of get more precise drops out of them, like one or two drops easier, because the um, the little tip of them, if I can get this open and show you, it's like this little super precise little tip. It's pretty sick. Um, I really feel like I have better control of the paint coming out of the bottle. Um, they're a little funky. you do got to push them down and pop them, so they uh, clamp down on there real good. That's what I get for trying to do anything one-handed when I'm filming. Um, anyway, let me get that on there. All right, sick. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we have some existing colors here and I've done a couple test pieces, which you probably may see in the background there. Um, I've used some of the older colors. I have definitely used the newer colors because I want to show them to you so very badly. Um, and let's take a look at what's going on. So the existing colors would be these, um, three glasses, afterburner, um, red rum and people eater. The new colors we are showcasing today is midnight city and dark ritual. Now, with these paints too, some other new things that are going on are these new labels. Um, they're bigger, they're probably easier to read from SCL. Um, just like I've always said in these videos, make sure you follow the instructions. With um, color shift paints, you, make sure, you need to make sure you're using the right base color underneath or they're not going to work correctly at all. Um, so we got the Midnight City here, which points out that you can do it over a black, white, or Zenithal base coat. Um, I've taken advantage of that with a um, mini that was uh, base coated in black and white, which you're going to see in a minute. They used to call this Zen Shift. I don't know if that's still the name they're using. Um, but yeah, that's how this one behaves. As compared to Dark Ritual, which on its bottle will tell you, you just paint it over black. Um, so I did that to try it out. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I was originally going to kind of try to paint some like swatches, whether it be like on a spoon or a lid or whatever. But after some discussion, um, I think it just makes more sense to show them off on the minis, even with my extra processes that I do, which I'll talk briefly about here as we look at them. Um, so let's just get started here. Hopefully I got my light real good. Okay. Let's zoom in here. So the first mini we have here, and I, I'm trying to remember if this is from the Pap Sickles Patreon or if this is one of the other ones that I do. Um, it doesn't matter anyway. It's just a cool, badass robot lady with these big punchy arms on a backpack. So what we did was, you know, some kind of standard paint work on the regular suit, but then on the, on the, uh, what do you call it? Cyberware or whatever. I'm like, I want to make it like the cool new paints that I got. So what we've done here, you're going to notice is I use the dark ritual on the arms, which is just this dark, just really pretty looking dark purple. Um, it 
kind of hard to see, but it does have some kind of, I guess, some gold in it as well. You'll see on the sample pictures on the TurboDork page um, how that kind of looks a little more. It's really, I'll be honest with you, it's really hard to film uh, color shift paints in general. Cameras just are like, I can't deal with this with my robot eyeballs, so we just kind of roll with it. But anyway, what we've got going on here is the, uh, the Dark Ritual is on the forearms here, as you see. Um, down on the hands, though, there's that Midnight City. And it's really cool. Like on this mini, it almost reminds me of like Cool Ranch with like a little bit of a, a color shift that Cool Ranch didn't have. Cool, cool Ranch was like a little bit of a darker blue without a shift. It was just kind of a metallic in my eyes, at least. On the backpack, we've used the Afterburner there. I have never used Afterburner before this video. And uh, man, I really like it. It's funky. I will say, um, looking at these, and you may not be able to tell as much on a camera as my eyeballs, but this, um, the, the I don't know if they've used a different... Um, like a metal particle that they get the shimmer out of it, but it has a different effect. It kind of like, I don't know, it looks like metallic static in my eyes. It's just got a little bit of a different look that I can notice. Um, and maybe it's just my brain playing tricks with me, but it, it does look really cool. I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, that's what we kind of did here. And I mean, I've used a little color, different other things with the colors, like the cabling and stuff. I did that with the Army Painter Speed Paints. Um, with the body, I actually didn't do any kind of speed paints. It was just a um, kind of a lilac, and I used some purple washes to get in those cracks to get it looking nice, and did maybe a little bit of edge highlighting across it in some various places, but kept it simple, you know. Um, but yeah, that's what we got going on with this mini. Then did a little bit of base work with some little stick-on plants and stuff. Um, second piece here. This, I think, is, in my opinion, a much better showcase for that dark ritual. This cute little baphomet here. Um, I like to print and paint sometimes these little, um, they're called Grumpy, G-R-U-M-P-I-I. It's the Patreon they come from. And um, use the uh, afterburner on the horns, which on the horns, man, you really see it. And that stuff is just gorgeous. Uh, on the horns and on the tail, I didn't have a hot pink metallic that I wanted, so I actually made my own with some iridescent medium. And this hot pink I have in fluorescent pink for the inside of the wings and kind of markered in some, some uh, vein-looking stuff inside of the wing membranes. And full and full uh, full force here is the dark ritual all over the the Baphomet skin, just it, just a stunning color. I mean, see what you think. I mean, this is what you're getting here when I mean, you get this stuff. It's cool. Uh, I want to try the other colors, but man, I'm impressed with dark ritual. Just got a nice look to it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we've got going on. And then I don't know how well you can tell, but I used um, Rainbow Road on the eyes. I'm just I'm always a sucker for that crazy rainbow sparkle and the, just the pitch black that it offers. Um, there's just a little bit of marker work I did on here too to kind of accentuate some details. Um, and then went over it with a, um, it just a straight up gloss medium. Like I will sometimes on, uh, metallic and pearlescence, I'll just paint with no paint in it, just the gloss medium, just to shine it up. Give this color just a little more pinch, punch. And then the grand finale is, uh, this is a piece from Papsicles and now you get to see exactly what you get out of Midnight City if you're willing to use the Zenith Shift to your advantage. The Mini was, of course, slap chopped so I could have that super fine detail with the black and white. And then just hit it, it's just Midnight City. Um, I mean, on the eyes, I did, you know, some just some yellow, it's like kind of a, a, I don't know if it's called a cadmium yellow, but a yellow that really punches. Um, the base I actually made myself, I took a bunch of like minis that I printed and chopped them up, made bodies. And then um, I glued them to the base and I used like baking soda and stuff to kind of make guts and gore. Um, and then use some like, pa I use, no, I use baking soda and I use coarse texture medium, uh, Liquitex brand. I always like using that for grit and sandy looking stuff. Um, then did some red paints and then use some red washes to really make it look wet. And then whenever it was some more gloss medium, because I still wanted to keep that moisture, um, use some red wash and some gloss medium on her because she needs to be physically apart. When you're trying to make a diorama piece, you always need to make sure that you're mindful of the um, diorama physically connecting with the mini. And I don't just mean glued in, I mean it needs to feel like it's a part of it. So if your badass uh, queen here is walking through dead bodies, there needs to be blood on her feet. There needs to be blood on her hands where she's maybe touched something. They need to have a connection to tell that story that these two are indeed connected things. Even on the tail, there's some blood on the tail. But um, yeah, this is the this is the crown piece of the stuff that I did here with this, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I know it's only the Midnight City on this particular piece, but I was just very happy with how this turned out. It's just kind of me throwing stuff together to see what happens. Um, super sick. But, um, 
Yeah, so that's it for... Oh, no, it's not it. That's it for the paint part of the showcase. Now let's talk about the other thing they sent me. Over here. So, in a past time, they sent me their newer uh, non-stick uh, dry palettes um, with silicone material. I really like these with the Turbo Dogs. They, I was worried they were going to dry out quicker than a wet palette. I mean, they probably do, literally, but um, the paint stayed workable the entire time I used it in these. It's not what the video is about today, but silicone be like that. It like It's a very non-stick material. It seems to cup the moisture in pretty good, good enough to do what I need to do. And the paint stays very stable in this, and I'm very happy with what I got out of it. So when I saw that they're now coming out with silicone stir sticks, I'm like, hell yeah. Um, you know, just like with the um, with the silicone palette that they offered, um, they sell, it's a different manufacturer. This exemplar makes a uh, wet palette case. Um, it fits in there nice and neat. So do the stir sticks. Everything all plays well together. But um, for years, I've always been that guy that mixes his paint with a chopped off toothpick that I sanded smooth because I was always tearing my parchment paper and being a goober. Um, and I never let go of it. And now I finally have an excuse. And I'm glad because this stuff, it is silicone. It is floppy. Therefore, it's, I don't know how you would tear parchment paper with it, but it's, I feel a lot easier. I feel a lot less mindful mixing my paints of like, oh, I gotta be delicate or I'm gonna tear the paper. Um, it is also nonstick, of course. Um, is it a tool that you need to have to survive? Absolutely not, but is it a luxury that I'm gonna be using moving forward? Absolutely. I'm gonna throw my two picks in the trash. Thank you, Greg, for making me move to the modern age of not using just ridiculous stuff, man. Um, and thank you guys so much for sending me all these things to test. Um, I'm going to continue to use these products in future videos. I've got some other stuff. If you followed my Insta, I've been doing so much work on the Giver pieces. Um, please check out my Instagram if you want to check out any of that. Um, I'll be doing more pieces of uh, like making them than the probably video because there's just so much of it. Um, so stay tuned there. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, until next time, you guys.